Hi, my name is Hannah Kersop and I would like to present my poster on understanding the role of cognitive control in sleep and mental health, specifically focusing on adolescence. So we know that there's a pre-established relationship between poor sleep and mental health difficulties. However, the causal mechanism between this relationship is complex and still remains somewhat unclear. A possible contributing neurocognitive mechanism may be the role of cognitive control, which can be highlighted here by Harrington and Kearney's model on the right, which I would be happy to discuss discuss in more detail in person. This may be more pertinent during adolescence due to the shift in sleep architecture and the critical periods of executive function development during this developmental period. So um, here are our hypotheses, um, where hypotheses one, two, and three are basic associations based on previous literature, um, with hypothesis four being more central to this piece of research, which is that executive control will mediate the relationship between sleep and mental health. So to do this, we recruited and tested um, in secondary schools, um, in school students aged between 13 to 15 years old, in which they wore a sleep watch for seven nights to gain an objective measure of sleep. And then following a week later, they completed um, a series of cognitive tasks and also some um, questionnaires too. So for the subjective data results, we found that we had these significant associations between poor sleep and anxiety and depression symptoms, which is consistent with previous research. We also found that there was a significant association between sleep difficulties and shifting difficulties. However, this was not found for inhibition difficulties. We also found that um, a significant associations were found between inhibition difficulties and anxiety. Um, inhibition difficulties and depression and shifting difficulties and depression. However, no significant associations were found between inhibition difficulties and depression. So based on our more central hypotheses, looking at the mediation models, we found that shifting partially mediated the relationship between sleep difficulties and anxiety symptoms, and shifting partially mediated the relationship between sleep difficulties and depression symptoms. However, inhibition did not mediate the relationship between sleep difficulties for both anxiety and depression. When we looked at the objective data using the, the actigraphy from the sleep watches and also the cognitive tasks, such as the go-no-go -no -go task for inhibition, there were no significant correlations or mediation models observed. So to conclude, the expected associations were found for the first three hypotheses when we looked at subjective data. The mediation analysis with the subjective data suggests that sleep difficulties exert effects on anxiety and depression symptoms by directly impacting shifting, which in turn can affect anxiety and depression symptoms. So this is in line with the proposed model that we discussed at the start briefly. Um, however, there were no significant models for objective data, which might suggest that these rel relationships are specific to self-report in a general population sample that do not meet the clinical threshold. Thank you for listening.